So there are a lot of myths out there about UBI, and I wanted to take this opportunity to debunk a couple of them. Uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic. People are losing jobs left and right. So if anything, we are seeing in real time right now the necessity for UBI. And also we're seeing the flaws in our brutal, cruel capitalist system where the philosophy is to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Well, let's take that phrase for a moment. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps. First of all, you need boots. Well, what's the boots? Your job. What are the bootstraps? The money you make from the job. Well, jobs disappearing, that means your lifeline is disappearing. Your money's disappearing. So your boots and us, your bootstraps are being taken. So you can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps, not in the way you used to. And the thing is, they're projecting that a good portion of these jobs, maybe more than half of them, will never be coming back. So if anything, the need for UBI is, is absolute. It's definite at this point. So there's a couple things I want to talk about with, with UBI here. And that is that this myth that it makes people lazy. It's false, as I will explain. It will slow the economy down. Again, false. And I'll explain that. So let's start off with it makes people lazy. All right. Well, the following countries have experimented with UBI, and the results have been the same, basically. The United Kingdom, who did it twice. Kenya, who are still doing it. It was a 10-year program. Canada, they were, they were only taken off of UBI in, in Ontario because of the uh, Ontario Premier's ideological views. And then in Finland, theirs was a two-year pilot program. So it was a controlled study. Now, in all of these cases, the people who received UBI, they, they had a roof over their head, they were able to get new clothes, they were able to invest in things like getting new clothes on their back, making car payments, um, paying for education, uh, affording food even, uh, investing in a business if they wanted. So, by and large, these people, they, they, were, they were not lazy at all. If anything, it helped them to pull themselves up by their bootstraps because that UBI was the bootstraps they needed to pull themselves up. That's what this study, uh, these studies have proven. So if we did this in the United States, as with anywhere else in the world, sure, you're going to have a little bit of an uptick in people who are just like, ah, I just want to check out of the system. But you know what? You're going to have those people in any society. It doesn't matter what system you have. But to make the rest of the population who will be productive suffer because of a few people who are like, eh, I just want to check out of the system, that's not only cruel and inhumane, it's also irrational. And you're also stunting economic growth by denying people that, which I'll get to now. The fact that it would stunt the economy. No, that's not true at all. If anything, give it corporate socialism, the COVID uh, CARES Act, the CARES Act that was given to corporations and billionaires, uh, the very first bill that was voted on over the phone, mind you. Well, that was just a giant giveaway to corporations and billionaires. And the people got crumbs. They just got a one-time $1,200 payment, if some of them even got it at all. I'm still not sure if I've even gotten it yet. So, smoke and mirrors as far as that $1,200 uh, payment goes. And, they, and the talks fell apart for another one recently because of ideological differences. And because they're, the people in Congress are slaves to corporations and billionaires and are paid to leave the people hanging out to dry. That's just it. That's the reality of that. But to slow the economy down, here's what this means. Really, they're giving trillions of dollars to billionaires and corporations, and the Fed pumping that money into the stock market every day while ignoring the people. That is going to stunt the economy. The only reason you're going to see any kind of growth, which has been on in online sales, which is why... Folks like Amazon and other companies who are still afloat because of online sales. Um, it's because of force of circumstances. That's all that is. People are forced to do it that way through circumstances. Well, a lot of these companies are also suffering because people can't go to restaurants. You know, they can't sit in, they can't eat. Um, you know, other things like gyms, uh, other traditional businesses that don't have online ordering at their disposal because they're small businesses. Uh, they're suffering. Some of them are closed, and some of them are never going to come back. That's stunting economic growth. It's actually shrinking the economy. So the, th the, the idea that UBI would, st would shrink the economy or stunt economic growth is false. What's happening now is doing that. Because giving the money to the rich is just basically cutting out the, the – uh, it's basically eliminating the road. It's taking a shortcut. 
to getting the amount of money that they want. Let's say their goal is to have a trillion dollars. Well, if the bailouts give them that trillion dollars, their goal's accomplished, they don't need to offer jobs anymore. They can just close the business down and go away with their trillions of dollars and invest it somewhere else. So that shrinks the economy. It leaves us hanging out to dry. It's selling us out and basically saying to the rest of us, okay, I've gotten what I wanted out of you. Now it's up to you to do what you want. Okay, revolution time, right? History has shown time and time again that when rich people do this, revolution follows because they get rich at our expense. They leave us hanging out to dry and they're like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Hey, rich assholes, you just took the boots along with the bootstraps. There's nothing to pull ourselves up by. And even so, who are you to dictate to us how to live? Huh? What gives you the right to, to sentence us to death for not wanting to participate in a system that made you rich? So there's that. But if you redirect UBI to the bottom, give it to the people instead of corporations and billionaires, you're strengthening the foundation of the economy. Rather, when you take money away from people and give it to billionaires and corporations, you're weakening the foundation in favor of fancier window dressing. And eventually, it's going to be exposed for what it is. And that fancy window dressing is going to collapse along with the house of cards that it's covering. But by redirecting you, that, that money towards working people, towards, uh, towards poor people, those who actually need it, those without jobs, even those who have jobs. Let's face it, nobody's making a living wage these days. UBI gives everybody a lifeline to support themselves. Now, what the rich and corporations are worried about here, in reality, is the people having more power, having more say over economic discourse, which they don't want. They know that UBI will give the people this, this amount of power and that they'll be screwed. Their power, their power is going to be basically either equal or nullified at that point, which is why they're responding to the George Floyd protests and whatever with fascism. Because they realize the writing's on the wall, their power is going to come to an end at some point, and they're and they're going to go down fighting. So they don't want UBI done for that purpose, because they know that right away people have more of a voice in the economy, and um, their monopoly over the economy is done. They're not going to be as rich as they want to be. But what this will ultimately do, of course, is it will strengthen the foundation of the economy, and will we can have a more prosperous and thriving economy from that. More people having more money from the bottom up means there's more demand. More demand means more jobs. More jobs means more take-home pay, which means a stronger economy and more growth. So that's how UBI works. Now, it could be anything. It could be more jobs. It could be more independent businesses. Um, yeah, uh, you will have some people here and there who are just going to want to check out of the system. But hey, they're still going to consume. They're still going to need things. They're still going to want to eat. They're still going to need clothes. They're still going to need a roof over their head. Uh, they're still going to need to get health care at some point. So them having money in their pocket out of the gate will stimulate the economy. That's just the reality. That's what every study has shown. So there's a couple of myths debunked from UBI. Hopefully that helps uh, helps out with some people who have been on the fence about it. So um, I'll be back later with more videos, guys.